Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. We've got a very important video and something to talk about today. And we are Ju uh, July 8th, I believe. And this time of year, at least here in, in North Georgia, and probably pretty much everywhere in the country, uh, people are going to start having problems with hive beetles and wax moths. And this is a little tip right here that will save your hive, especially when it comes to smaller colonies. Now, when we sell a colony, for example, this box that's sitting right here, we'll, we'll, we'll get a brand new box and we'll put all the frames in it. And then we go into another colony and we'll pull out a frame, usually a, a, a frame of cat brood Sometimes it, it'll be a little bit weaker. In this case, it was a little bit weaker that we put in place of it. And those foragers, some of those foragers will come back and then we'll introduce a queen, queen cell, etc. You know, just explain to you why we got a weak colony. So, uh, or if you're doing splits, you're always gonna have weaker colonies. Now, hive beetles, wax moths, that's what they'll take over is those weaker colonies they will take over weaker colonies and they have a hard time taking over strong colonies because the bees will fend them off the bees will actually bully the hive beetles and put them in a corner and shove them places and and trap them and uh, put them in what they call prisons that they can actually propolize around them and and close them off they're they're very good if there's enough bees in there to do it but if you have a hive that's like this one, okay, this has very few bees on it, very few. And actually, what I'll do with this hive here, it's got an active queen in it, and she's laying by a small pattern. I'll drop a frame of capped brood from another hive. So I'll shake the bees off that frame before I put them in here because there's not enough bees here to protect that queen if they decide to kill that queen. So I'll shake the bees off and I'll stick them in this hive with these bees. And, and also keep in mind while we're talking about this on the subject about doing splits, the queen will lay according to how many bees is in the hive. If you have very few bees, she's gonna lay very few eggs. So boost your numbers up. You know, put that cat brood in there. The more bees that gets generated in there, the more she's gonna lay. So if you have a hive that's very weak, Go ahead and put a frame of cat brood and watch her start laying. Watch how fast she picks that pace up because she'll lay according to, to, to the workers that she has in that hive. So just, you know, getting a little off subject, but since I'm, you know, talking about doing splits, I thought I'd throw that little tip in there for you. Now, what I was wanting to talk about, you'll have wax in here. And um, what'll happen, unattended wax, in a hive is very vulnerable to hive beetles and wax moths. See how this, there's no bees covering this. So if a wax moth comes in, they're gonna take over that wax and they're gonna take over the colony. They'll get a foothold in there, they'll start laying eggs and they'll work their way from one side to across. Uh, those little maggot looking uh, larva will exit the hive. They'll go into the ground They'll hatch out, they'll come back adult hive beetles, and they will come back in huge numbers. So what you need to do is get you another box and stack these. Now, what I, here's what I do. I just stack them on the outside. Of course, not with bees on them. You would shake the bees off. But I just stack them to the side like that. Then as the colony builds up strength, I'll put them back in. Now, when they're outside the colony like this, hive beetles and wax moths will not touch them. If there's too much light and they uh, wax moth and high beetles like dark they don't like anything in the open like that so wax out in the open is pretty well safe and they won't attack that because it's now if you put it in a box leave the lid off of it you know and space them apart a little bit in the in the box if you can to let as much light and air in there as that you can to to preserve those frames and as the colony needs them add them back to the colony now what we'll do here 
for instance, I'll shake those bees off in the colony, and then I'll put just, this one just has a little bit of drawn comb on the top. It's a starter strip, just a little bit of comb, not much. Okay, the frame that the, that the most of the bees are on, and then like, you know, just a, they're just a handful right here. So I'll just simply just shake them back down in the, in the hive. And then I'll put this to the side like that. And then this frame right here is, has just a little tiny bit, which would be okay. And, and that'll be it. That's all I'll put in there. And another thing, uh, when your hive is tilted forward, it makes it so much easier for them to keep debris and junk and wax, uncapped wax, you know, as the, as the bees eat the, their honey reserve, wax cappings will fall to the bottom. Uh, that is a, a huge attractor for hive beetles and, and wax moths. But if you keep that hive tilted forward, it's easier for those bees to clean that bottom out and push it out the front. If it's, if it's level or tilted back, you would be surprised at how much debris builds up in that hive. And then as that debris builds up, those hive beetles will come in and they'll, they'll lay eggs all through that. So keep that in mind too. Uh, another thing while we're talking about hive beetles, see we, we've been gone for a week and we come back because I had all this weed eaten before I left and come back and I hadn't put out any of our uh, homemade Herbicide, herbicide with the, the salt and vinegar uh, solution that we use, but uh, which we also have a video, you can go look at that. So we put some of it down and you can see where it's dying off already. We made a, you can go back and check out one of our videos where we made that solution. So it's starting to kill the grass off. Um, I had weed eaten before it left, but th this underlayment is, um, getting a few holes in it and the grass is popping through. But anyway, what I'm trying to get to is keep keep it clean underneath your hive. Get that grass out of it. That's a place for the hive beetles to hide. That's a place for the hive beetles to burrow in the ground. And it's a place for a cat to crawl under and attack you. But that's one thing I want to talk about. The next thing I want to talk about is traps. You are so much better off to put you a trap inside your hive to w kill what hive beetles do come in your hive. Keep the numbers down. Do everything you can do to fight these things. Uh, one thing that we do do is we'll take these beetle barns. See if I can see it here in the sun good. And we use these. And you can put bait in the center and around the side it's up to you do you do you some research uh there's certain things that certain baits that you can't really talk about because if they're not recommended for for bees then uh, can cause trouble so uh w one ingredient that you can use uh, is boric acid and there's a uh, you can take one teaspoon of boric acid, two tablespoons of Crisco, mix it up and spread that around and that will get rid of your hive beetles. It's toxic to hive beetles. Inside the trap, it's fine. The bees can't get to it. It's not gonna hurt them. They wouldn't eat it anyway. Now there are other things that you can put in there that you can't recommend but you know, do you some research, and uh, there's there's uh, there's certain things that you can use that you can't really talk about. Now, here's a this is a tablet form boric acid. Uh, you can you know check at lawn and garden centers, and you can find these. I can't really you know say what it is it but it, it it is it's boric acid in, in pill form if you check your lawn and garden centers look around you'll find it just remember what it looks like and uh 
and please uh, in the comments don't ask because it, it's it's that's something that's really a touchy subject for a lot of people so just uh, you know go to your lawn and garden centers uh, department stores check in their lawn uh, you, you'll find this it's it's not that hard to find it this works excellent but it, but if you're worried about any of that just make your own make your own uh, with a boric acid and Crisco and that it works fine as well this is just very convenient you can pop a pill in there close it up and it's it's ready to go so that's we'll cover our traps so we'll take that trap we'll drop it here in the bottom like so but there's enough light out here see it's still a little bit dark and we'll close it up and those those bees will do fine uh, we've got our trap in there we you know go have the grass dead underneath and you got to do everything you can do to get rid of these things if you have a very rainy season you'll have a very bad hive beetle problem keep that in mind um, that's about it for today just a little little hint from barnyard bees that we're trying to get this message out because now's the time these hive beetles and wax moths are go, they're coming and be ready for them. Do everything you can to get rid of them. Uh, you know, a lot of skeptics will talk about, you know, using bait and it's toxic to bees and such. But I'm telling you what, if you don't use it, you'll lose your bees. And how toxic is that? How toxic are those hive beetles and wax moths to your bees? Because uh, that's why it'll kill your bees. And uh, while we're talking about wax moths and... I had this on another video, but, uh, you know, some people may not have seen it. I don't know if you can see, if I can even zoom in and see up here. Right there on the corner of that building, I have a bug zapper. And that bug zapper will reduce the number of wax moths dramatically in your area. Spread a few of them around as well. That one's a dusk, dusk to dawn. And I plug it in, you don't have to worry about it. About once or twice, you know, every couple of weeks, blow it out real good. Because the, the bugs seem to stick in it, because it'll catch mosquitoes and, um, as well. So it, it kind of help you out with that as well. Um, that's about it for today. Hey, don't forget, uh, our Barnyard Bee Rapid Feeders. We have a lot of these, these are, these are bar none best feeder on the market i can guarantee you everyone that's used these loves them they're uh they're an inner feeder they go in inside your hive so it prevents robbing uh you fill it up with sugar water and the bees will come up through it's rigid on the inside they'll walk down and feed the sugar water and you will not find a better and even the homemade versions don't compare to these things right here. You will love these things. Um, you can go to barnyardbees.com and buy them. Uh, call our store. Don't forget we have queens all the way through probably till November. Depending on, how, on uh, the, how our drones hold out for the year. As long as our drone population is going good, we'll have queens. We'll be able to make queens. So um, don't forget, spread these videos out, folks. Let's, let's get these. Any tip like this is uh, a lot of people don't talk about this on, on these videos, you know, how to control the, the hive beetles, and they're a huge problem. Help these new beekeepers out. Show them the videos or tell them about it. And uh, that's about it. Don't forget to click on the little bell. You'll be notified of new and upcoming videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and always check the, the description because a lot of times I'll forget to talk about things in the videos and sometimes I'll put it in the description so don't forget to check there and thanks for watching barnyard bees